Yes, greetings, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome. I think uh, for the meantime, we can give it something like two minutes as we wait some other people to join and we can continue from there. I'm grateful for your time that you have actually given it to come and join us as we share the different uh, series of why innovations. Thank you very much. Thank um, a number of people who have joined us. I can see we have uh, Mr. Patrick Mugisha, who is currently working with the Innovate Lab Africa, uh, the Com Commissioner of Innovation at Science and Technology Intellectual Property. I am sure many of you know him. You are welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Professor Ijo, thank you very much. You're really welcome. And uh, Mr. Alvin Chakonye, you're very welcome on this webinar. We are grateful for your time. On the same platform, we are having a friend of ours who is currently, uh, we are arranging a partnership between uh, both of us, Sweden, and uh, the founder of both of us, Sweden, Mr. K. Nank has joined us on this platform. We are welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you for, share, for sparing this time to join us. We are grateful for that. Very many people there. Wilbur, you're very welcome. Vincent, Shiba. Shiba comes from a, a different university, but she is a lecturer somewhere. And uh, she's from uh, MOOBS. She's passionate about innovation. I have a story about Shiba, but I would not really feel like sharing it. Shiba, you are welcome. <laughs> thanks for joining us. <laughs> Marceline, thanks for joining. We are really grateful. We shall actually be, as I think for the meantime, we can start from where we are as other people join us uh, because uh, we this thing is timed and uh, we, we have a lot of things to share. Otherwise, uh, I am. I don't know. I wanted to find out whether anyone can see the screen I've shared, so that I can continue from where, from that. I don't know whether anyone is seeing the screen shared. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, that is great. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Patrick. Uh, yeah, I want to take this opportunity to greet you and probably I would request uh, uh, my brother, Mr. Patrick, to give us a short opening prayer and we start from there. Thank you, Job. Uh, let's humble ourselves and pray. Uh, dear Lord, we want to thank you for this afternoon and we want to thank you for the gift of life and for the gift of a new day. We thank you for the ability to innovate, create, and think, to be able to solve our problems that um, affect us as an institution, as a nation, as a region, as a continent, and at the global level. As we share ideas and listen to what uh, our conveners have to share with us, we hope that we're going to be able to interact collectively and have a very uh, productive discussion that is going to help each party and stakeholder involved here. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Thanks, Mr. Patrick. As I say, Priyo, that I really thank everyone who has managed to save time, spare it, and join us as we, we share why innovation and entrepreneurship. We have, uh, as you look, uh, as, you, as the screen shared, it says, uh, why do we think that is the only pending and remaining opportunity for employment, income generation as the leading route to success. I, that is our theme today, and I'm grateful that at least some of you have, uh, I am I'm thinking at times that we have people who are already converted, people like uh, Mr. Patrick Ngisha, 
I have Shiba here on board. Mr. Kainer, who is working with the United Nations, SDG, and actually the founder of uh, both of us. We have also Mr. Cho Peng, who is from STEAM, Australia, and Mr. Miro, who will also be sharing something ahead there. We also have a student from Cavendish University, who is a student from the Faculty of Information Technology, who will also be sharing uh, a such, such why, why, why innovation and, and how he, as an individual, understands innovation. Uh, to cut the story short, as we, we cut time, uh, I'm thinking that uh, everyone, as we agree that people are seeing the screen, we have uh, a lot of things to discuss, but we shall cut time. We have uh, the university vision, mission and values. Uh, Cavendish University, Uganda is a sister university with Cavendish University, Zambia, and other departments, other, other campuses in different places. Here in Uganda, we are located opposite the American Embassy, that's Gaba Road. We have another campus in Kamocha, the School of Law. And we have also another campus, School of Business, headed by Dr. Faith at the King's Gate. Me, who is speaking, uh, I'm known by the names Joba Naudet Skagata. I currently work as the manager of innovation and entrepreneurship at Cavendish University of Uganda. Cavendish has a vision, which you can see properly, a center of excellence, innovation and transformation. That's the vision of Cavendish University of Uganda. And its mission is to transform and inspire students to reach their full potential in employment, entrepreneurship, and ethical leadership. That is the future because that's the world and that's the mission of the university. We have values of excellence, integrity, responsibility, respect, communication, passion, and innovation. And the values of this university have got that sector of innovation. I'm happy about that. Who is Joe Banaldi Skagata talking to today and right now? I've been in the different vast fields. And as you can see, I'm a very ambitious and practical person who has gained a vast amount of design thinking, administrative skills, along with professional knowledge of computer, because my background is that uh, I have uh, my first bachelor's was in information technology from City University London. And I also have a master's in innovation and entrepreneurship that is from Bristol University. I possess strong communication skills because that is part of innovation, presentation and all that. But specifically that is Joe and that is me, your current speaker. I've at least done some uh, education because education does not stop. I keep studying every day. It's not because I'm trying to look for, uh, I, I'm looking for being the most educated person. No, people have done PhDs and they're continuously doing education. I have been acquiring information that can support me and help me pass on this information to those who will not have time to go to these classes. That's why I've done a different certificates in design thinking, have a diploma in design thinking, I have a diploma in entrepreneurship, innovation, trademark, and patent strategies. I have a certificate of operation management, a product design, diploma in business management. I've done a diploma in a strategy, you know, different things, but all of them. I've done this because I wanted to be kind of my purpose that the time I begin talking to people or maybe seeing that how we can convert people and understand why innovation, I have at least legit information about what I'm talking about. Uh, to cut that and uh, to, why why am I here? Uh, you know, sometimes people would want to know why am I working as the manager of innovation and entrepreneurship at Cavendish University in Uganda? Specifically, I am here to provide strategic leadership of innovation and entrepreneurship because of the background of education that and also different uh, experiences I've gone through that are actually are not provided through education. 
And this department was established to develop programs that nurture innovation and entrepreneurship for our students and staff. But our innovation incubation hub will actually welcome the public who have got ideas and we shall actually be working together in partnership with different stakeholders. We are targeting to have uh, Innovent Lab Africa on board. And uh, also we are having different partnerships like KNAC from both of us, uh, Sweden, so that we can work as a team to see that we can push the goals. We understand very well that in innovations, it is all about teamwork. You could be the genius of the innovation, you have an idea, but at the end of the day, you're not technical to actually prototype it or put it into existence. That's why we need stakeholders. And those people who have joined us, like uh, Mr. Patrick Mugisha from Innovent Lab and Kena from uh, both of us, Sweden, we appreciate your time. We are, that's the reason as why we are, we are saying we have partnered with other industries, companies and organizations, locally and internationally in a collaboration of funding. Actually, when I talk about funding, I get back to Mr. K. Nag. Mr. K. Nag, both of us has been getting funding. I've been uh, searching for funding for universities in Sub-Saharan Africa to see that uh, we can get the push because in innovation without funding, you don't get raw material. Without funding, you cannot push prototypes. You cannot do a lot of things. So people like Mr. K. Nag are partnering with the Cavendish University, Uganda, to see that we can get this funding that is necessary. Specifically, our primary funder is the university itself, the administration and the investors of this university. But we have, we need the support of people like uh, Kena who have the experience in this, and they will be supporting us in pushing these goals. This department supports students and staff in accelerating their ideas, innovations, concepts, and unleashing their potential to becoming social and economic change makers, entrepreneurs through service and product innovations. Why do I say so? Gone are the days when people start, were relying on uh, transcripts. But today, if a university would wake up in the morning and think that its students are going to rely on a transcript to make it in life, it becomes a problem. That is the reason as to why Cavendish University, Uganda, woke up in the morning and established the Department of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. What am I trying to say here? In life, do people understand innovations? And why innovation is a partner of entrepreneurship? In life, we say without innovation, there isn't anything new and without anything new, there will be no progress. It is a kind of a fact that uh, People don't understand innovation. They are, actually, I will tell you that 70% of uh, people on planet don't, uh, cannot explain why innovation. But if you begin deep diving in innovation, you find out that we are living in innovations. But these innovations are actually kept on being brushed through a package that we call entrepreneurship. It is the reason as to why sometimes you wake up in the morning and see there is a vehicle called uh, Toyota Hilux Model 2002 with different types of lights, and they bring Model 2003 with a different design. They are trying to brush. That's what we call entrepreneurship. Uh, the single biggest reason why most organizations and individuals do not achieve their full potential is fear of failure. And this is what actually uh, people have faced uh, it is a problem that people, I will give you an example. If someone was selling tomatoes in the market and you woke up in the morning headed to that lady or a gentleman and you ask that gentleman to change business from uh, selling tomatoes to selling fish, you would be shocked that that person because he or she fears to lose the clients who he knew probably that on a daily basis they come and take tomatoes worth the 5,000. But he has not yet managed to secure a client who would come to purchase fish from him or her. It's the fear of failure. There is a statement that is at times made by Zuckerberg most of the times. And he always says that uh, the biggest risk on planet is the fear to take risk. And uh, that is a problem. We need a mindset change. Lack of leadership and direction in innovation and entrepreneurship. And that is the reason as why Cavendish University, Uganda has employed Job and Alex Kadeta. I'm here to lead and direct in this department. 
so that I see that at the end of the day, results are achieved. We can get execution, we can implement, and we can only implement by working hand in hand with people like uh, Innovent Lab Africa. Uh, we have Goldstone. We have uh, uh, we bring. We are working hand in hand with a KNAP from both of us, uh, Sweden, to see that all these things uh, are pushed. Because in innovation, as I you earlier said, it is not a one man show. It is a team. It is teamwork. So uh, that is it. Short term thinking. Most of our students, public, and I will also say staff, they don't believe in. Uh, hope, because innovation is hope and it's the future. There is a fact that uh, there is someone who woke up one day and made a statement that uh, dreams never come true. I'm thinking that that was a short term thinking. Dreams never come true, it is a lie. Dreams come true because most of innovations, most innovations come from dream, dream something. They don't come true because I think, you think you can work on it as an individual. In uh, when, we, when I take you to the incubation hubs and incubation center, you, an idea is brought on table and a team of people with different professionals begin brushing it because that's the public. And it means that that person, he or she is going to actually add value on your idea. And where you would probably have failed, it can break through from the idea being brought or tabled by a member on the team that is brushing it in the innovation hub. Lack resources, capacity to do it. It is the same reason as to why we would need people like uh, the Innovate Lab Africa, uh, KNA, to see that we can get resources. Capacity to do it because they have different professionals. They have way out on how we, we can support each other in helping the next generation that we currently hold at Cavendish University, Uganda. Because most of the students, <laughs> they have got the ideas, but do we, do they have the resources to actually uh, achieve and take through uh, these ideas in the design thinking process, specifically maybe in the innovation hub? Now, those resources are the things we as Cavendish University looked into and we did decide to actually partner with these people and have them on board. MTN Uganda is joining us very soon. We shall be signing this partnership so that we see <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, it's part of life. Every head of the man coughs. Uh -huh. <coughs> Lack collaboration. Lacking collaboration. If I, as the head of the Department of Innovation and uh, Entrepreneurship at Cavendish University, did not believe that I can work with the faculty of ICT, faculty of business, and different faculties to see that we can put this goal, believe me or not, it would be a failure. It wouldn't work out it will become a problem. So we, in innovation, we collaborate. That's why even in an innovation hub, it is about teamwork, despite the fact that uh, we don't believe in each other. So we wake up in the morning and we have uh, different documents that we sign in innovations hub, like uh, non-disclosure agreements, because we have to protect these ideas. Uh, you have no time. Very many people have no time to begin brushing those ideas. But I am sure that in a collaboration, that if we woke up in the morning and worked as a team, believe me or not, we would actually push it. How do we do this? By pushing each other, working as a team, reminding each other to see that we can work on this. You could be not having time, but if the idea is in an innovation hub, different people keep on brushing it. If you as an individual can't brush it, then it will move, it will work out. Lack of focus, people don't have, don't focus. I'll give you an example. There is what we call incremental innovation. This is probably, let me give one example. If uh, this, when you look at this glass, the design it was made, it could have been uh, produced by a different, certain company. But uh, what we call incremental innovation is that aspect of you looking at this glass in the design it is, and you say, no, I wish, or I think this, this, this glass would have been produced in this kind of uh, uh, design or anything of the sort, then uh, you, meaning you are now focusing on what the pull or the pull and push of the public, specifically starting from you as an individual. And you go sit down with those people after, most especially I always tell people protect your ideas before you go present them, because human beings are difficult, apart from uh, uh, a few like I, 
we who believe in uh, the fear of God. But even those who have feared God have uh, always seen them doing funny things. So there is this aspect of never trust anyone. So I'll give you an example. <clears throat> I happen to have produced this uh, a design of the iron ships you people currently call in Uganda the tile iron ships. Uh, even here, there are people producing them. I, I designed that, but because I did not understand the power of innovation, I ended up losing it. So, I don't want to go deep in that. Let me, let, let's continue because it will, it will put us off track. It's a long story. You have lots of ideas, but you don't value and know it. Why? The ideas you have, you have them, yes, everyone has an idea, but you don't value them and you don't know it simply because you have not understood that the power of innovation is actually execution. You have an idea, but you're not willing to share it so that we can be it can be brushed. And after brushing it, it is at the end of the day, either uh, tabled as a service or a product. And this is after execution. So that's what I'm trying to talk about. You have lots of ideas, but I don't know that they probably, you could be not in position to brush them and take them to the, uh, take them through the process of design thinking. So those ideas through an innovation hub, they are brushed. Just wake up in the morning, bring your idea. We have a recording book, we record them, we register them, and we see how we can brush them. Where we fail, we seek support, we outsource from people like, uh, uh, the people I talked about, the partners, the stakeholders who we are trying to target and uh, look forward to working on. When you look at your screen, this screen shows you how creativity and what we are trying to talk about. Now, did you ever wake up in the morning and thought that if you could create something that could protect a child who you are bathing from being affected with the foam, uh, soap foam, the eyes of being having that gadget, it would be possible because you're not going to wake up in the morning and tell this child to close his or her eyes. Problem solving comes from creativity. What happens? I don't know whether you can see that. That is what I'm trying to talk about. Creativity, and that is an innovation. Someone woke up in the morning and he or she said, no, I can create something. And this is what he did. I'm sure this opens your eyes to prove to you that every problem has got a solution. The solution of the baby is not going to be, please close your eyes as I bathe you. The solution is plan B. How do I do this without talking to this kid? Because he or she does not understand currently. But I am sure that if you created such a gadget, then you are safe and the baby is safe. That's what I'm talking about. Now, there is this thing I'm not actually the campaign in TikTok, but I'm very sure that Mr. Peng, if you have already joined us, you are aware that there are countries like China who have got long rooms with about a number of 500 plus people who are currently every day looking at TikTok and looking for this information knowledge. And at the end of the day, they take them in intubation centers, innovation hubs, and they execute. Now, people are busy exploding what they have on TikTok. And they're doing this because they lack information, knowledge of intellectual property. And that is a field and uh, Mr. Mugisha Patrick is a professional in that field. I know, I, I think uh, as we go uh, in, in the future there, he will be a person who will help us. Look at what this gentleman is doing. <laughs> wow, creativity, that is creativity. It's like, instead of waking up in the morning and you carry the bag, what now? how do you brush this and, become, and, and make it a product? That's beautiful. That is the power of thinking outside the box, the power of thinking. Actually, I was talking to our vice chancellor, uh, Professor Mogisha one day, and he told me that at times he tells people, no, don't think outside the box. Think without the box, just believe that the box is not there and think because sometimes if you think that you're going to think without the box, then at the end of the day, you rely on that box. So think without the box, that is beautiful. 
In innovation, we have something that is called uh, trade secrets. How do, I'll give you an example of Coca-Cola. Up to date, no one knows the formula of Coca-Cola. That is because we call that trade secret. Actually, in patenting or maybe registra registration bureaus, you don't need to take a paperwork to these people to protect an, an, a, 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 a trade secret. That is you. It is in your brain. It is the power of how you understand to protect it, how you mix it, and how you do that. Now, when you look at this gentleman, there is a statement that he says, Dave Dreamer. When you look at this, He's showing you, you don't know what he's doing, how he's producing that. It's a trade secret. Now, someone wakes up in the morning, also says, okay, I can jump, join. You can make money like that. Then I'm doing also make money. Now look at that. Okay. You, see, you don't know how he did that. You don't know how he actually managed to produce that. Now, you don't know the idea behind the piece. Thing. And you think he's producing money from a tree? The trade secret we are talking about. Mr. Peng, you are welcome. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. So, this is the thing I'm talking about. Trade secrets. You will never know. You will never know that. Now, Mr. Peng, we have people here in Africa who actually use their creativity in uh, a way of actually publicizing themselves. And uh, when they do all these things, it is a power and it proves to you that they are very creative. Now, when you look at this thing that I have put here, it shows you that this gentleman is creative. But what is this creativity all about? <laughs> He's creative, but is he using his creativity in the right direction? I don't know. <laughs> But I'm thinking that is wrong. Okay, maybe it can be actually right because it's showing you that he has the power to think because he can do that. I was talking about technology and innovations that people, if you don't become an innovator, you risk to lose a lot of things. The jobs you are actually in position today are being washed away by people who are innovating like Mr. Peng. People wake up in the morning every day and come up with different creativity. Look at this. You who knew that uh, someone can create an innovation that can turn to be a waitress or a waiter with artificial intelligence? Mr. Penn, you are aware of this, and these are the things you are playing around with every time. So, these things are killing jobs, employment is going to cease now. Become an innovator so that either your innovation or your idea is going to earn you uh, an earning than you thinking that by staying to be an, a waitress, you have a safe job, your job is not safe. And I'm even sure that even those who are doing law, in future ahead there, we are going to see lawyers being uh, computers, robots. We are going to see judges becoming robots. And this technology even started in uh, countries like the United States where you put uh, your palm and it begins measuring your, your pulse and all this is innovation. Now, Innovation and creativity has different sectors. It is the way of you. It's how you, you, how you, you think, how you solve a problem. Now, look at this gentleman. He's got two babies to take care of. And I think the other one has to be taken care of in a different manner. This one wants to swing. And at the end of the day, he has no way to do that. So what he did was to see that at the end of the day, he ran there. <laughs> <laughs> Creativity. It is very broad. It is very wide. It is the way of creativity and innovation is all about how you solve a problem. How do you solve a problem is the issue. How do you solve a problem is the issue of innovation. How do you simplify the, those hard tasks? It's the way of doing things, and that's what we call innovation. Technology has gone up very far. I'll give you an example of uh, giant companies that actually collapsed, like Ericsson. Ericsson was a giant in tech. Now, Ericsson did not really deep dive in the future of innovation, where Joe would have been in
innovation. And we are going to do this by starting something. You can never do anything without starting something. And we are here to start something so that something is done. Africa needs to wake up in the morning, wake up from the dark world they are sleeping in. Look at this. China is busy doing that. Africans are busy in churches, praying and thinking God is going to do something. What is the difference? How are you going to compete with people such as those of us? They are busy working. For you think God is going to wake up in the morning and bring success on your table without doing something. So we are, I'm here, I'm thinking that your idea has to be executed, brushed, and implemented to do something. And that is it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here, and we are here to work as a team, Cavendish University with its partners, to see that we build a trust culture. We all know that any development process is likely to throw up previous unknown issues and challenges. That's why I was actually talking about uh, how Ericsson fell in that trap. Now, we are here to change that. We are here to work hand in hand that yes, it will throw away the other previous unknown issues. There are innovations that actually come and actually delete those other things that are, are, are training. But now, what is entrepreneurship? Keep on brushing, brushing, brushing so that you can stay in the market. Take the lean path. That is by deep diving, understanding, actually accepting. Welcome failure. People fear to welcome failure. If there is failure, then there is a lot of challenges. I'll give you a short story of me with my friend, Patrick Mugisha. I, uh, there is something that actually I had, had some challenges sometimes. And he, he always insisted on one thing. Say, you're failing here, but welcome this failure. It is going to help you brush where, what, what, what actually, uh, actually where you went wrong. Some guy who actually worked on the light, this lighting, one day they asked him, why did you fail 1,000 times to make a bow? And you know what he said? He said, I did not fail 1,000 times, but it took me 1,000 times to get this. Or then the next time he was asked the same question and said, no, I did not fail 1,000 times, but I just fall 1,000 times that will not work. So failure should be welcome because it takes you on another lane. Uh, retain flexibility because when you welcome failure, then you are now being flexible. You begin actually accepting. When Mr. Payne says, no, this, no, A, B, C, D, actually this is, this is among the terms and conditions that are bulletins that work in an intubation center where every idea is registered and welcome. No one should actually begin rejecting ideas in an innovation hub. Most especially when you are brainstorming. When someone says this works like this and for you say no, it doesn't work. No, 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 that's not how it's done there. It is only not possible after testing the prototype that okay, it doesn't work. If we are actually, uh, 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 embedding the idea into the current uh, ideation and you say, no, 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 that, that, then you're going to fail because his idea is something. Then. That's what I call flexibility. Retain a flexibility whenever you ask, you, you're accepting to brainstorm or maybe bring something together. Final thoughts are very important in life. Final thoughts are very important because that's what I call decision making. Decision making is very important in life. Further reading on innovations. People should take time to begin understanding innovation. Because I always tell people that innovation is the only remaining and pending job on planet that does not even require an application. It is free of charge, entry is free. Exit is also free. Look at the Forbes magazine. I always tell people the Forbes magazine actually, who has a master's on the Forbes magazine? Actually here Zuckerberg got it, but it was a honorary because of what it does. It does not mean that becoming a professor or having a title like Dr. Peng guarantees you to success. No, 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 no. What have you done? Hands on. But you can only do this with reading more, getting information. Data does not matter because data is something that is actually just put there. It is always there. You find it. But information is very important because it is brushed every day. So reading on innovation is very important. 
Uh, one of the most common reasons of innovation failing is due to lack of budget or money invested in innovative approaches. Mr. Kainan, you're very important in this department. Funding is very important. And actually, Mr. Peng was also discussing the same thing with me this morning. And we are talking about this, about the United Nations, UNDP, where people can do different things and they achieve funding. Mr. Peng, I know when you start uh, your, 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 your presentation, you'll have to give some more lighting on this because people have to be opened up. People are still sleeping. Africa, I don't know. We need to actually wake up the sleeping. I don't want to use that word. Let us wake up these people so that they can uh, actually do something. Without innovations, it is easy to lose your competitive advantage. And for some companies, this has happened very rapidly and it is very destructive. It produces negative results. Every company actually should have an innovation department that can help it research and see how these things are branched. But if they don't have that, they, they risk to be thrown out of market because there is competition. You need to understand what people are right now demanding. They are pull and push. Now, if you don't innovate well, your business will collapse, but as an individual, life will fail. That statement, you need to deep dive into it because it is very, very broad. You need to really uh, do a very good research on that. If you don't innovate well, People come at your business, you have no customer care, you, you, do, you, give, you keep on giving them the same chapati, the same uh, test that you don't, you don't change tests in, even if it's a restaurant. Be innovative in any business you do. It is stay ahead of the competition. You have one step ahead of those people, and at the end of the day, by the time they realize that you are very far, by the time they, by the time people begin copying it, you've already ripped what you wanted to rip out of that. And actually, Mr. Patrick has always been telling me the same thing. We need Africa to take a step ahead. And that is why me, as the manager of innovation and entrepreneurship at Cavendish University in Uganda, I actually believe in capacity building because if people don't fall in love with innovation, they will not understand. If they don't understand that there is competition behind them, they will realize when they are back in the villages, their businesses collapse a long time and the banks are actually running after them. Now, <clears throat> innovation hubs, people don't understand what innovation hubs are. These are initiatives that are aimed at generating business between startups and large companies. Mainly, in addition, they are conducive to meeting people who interact, create, undertake work and innovate together in a network. Those are the hubs, meaning that's where brainstorming takes up from and actually that's where things are brushed, you know, a lot of things. Uh, that is a hallmark of today's society. However, more than that, being an innovator has become an increasing necessity. It is a necessity. It is something that people should embrace since the accelerated dynamics of consumption and the constant advances in technology make a lot of things absolute in a short time. Going against all that, the Innovation Hub offers a modern alternative to evolutionaries. I love that, evolutionary. I also believe in evolution. I don't believe in revolution. Currently, we are working as revolutions, okay, today here, but that is it. As a result, hubs provide innovation in a much more agile and broader way. Those are what they call hubs because they really support and help things go ahead. Promote. Why is this department here? It is here to promote. We are promoting innovation, creativity, and engagement in science. Foster problem solving ability and project-based learning. We provide hands-on practical learning and engagement in the process of science, technology, and innovation. Innovation does not mean that it's technology. Products are also taken as innovation, and that's what we believe in. We are going to be 
committed to looking to the future, anticipating trends and reacting accordingly. And that's the reason that's why this department was established. Increased research grant funding, that's why we are working with people like KNAC, Cavendish University of Uganda, but then actually I was shocked when uh, I was talking to one friend of mine and uh, uh, people, people have innovations, great innovations in this country, but it is shocking that the Uganda Registration Service Bureau up to date, people are not going there to register patents and we are less than 400 patents patent registered in the country. So people have to be sensitized to understand the power of protecting your idea. And that is the intellectual property I'm talking about. So industry partners with you, that's why we are talking about partnering with different organization companies to see that uh, people like the Uganda Investment Authority, can we partner with these people and they can also look into the presentations made by our students that maybe their investors can pick it from there, go invest in it, maybe buy royalties, so maybe make shares in that, that kind of thing, and it is job creation and employment. Uh, cutting the story short, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we, as I told you, we are partners, uh, people, I mean, uh, people who will also show us, that person uh, I would actually want to welcome right now because of time will be Dr. Miro, who will actually take us through uh, something, uh, is from a, a STEM foundation, and uh, that foundation, uh, stem cell, uh, is actually rich in the brains of in technology, most especially uh, web and uh, coding. So without wasting a lot of time, I would actually take it from there. Mr. Miro, you're very welcome. Nice to see you and happy to see that you saved time to come and share something with us. Thank you for coming. Please take it on from there. Thank you very much, uh, Joe, and um, thank you very much for giving us this uh, opportunity for us as well. Um, so uh, hello to everybody from Australia. This must might be a new um, way of listening, a new way of uh, listening to an Australian accent. So I hope you can understand me uh, properly as well. And so I'm the technical officer, the chief technical officer of Stem Cell Foundation. And we do STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, maths, but we do social enterprise learning. So the enterprise is actually very important. And we teach students to actually uh, innovate and create their projects so that they can help the community for the social good. I have here with me also, um, Mr. Peng Chu, who's a CEO of um, Stem Cell Foundation in Australia. And I would invite Peng to say a few words um, before I uh, do a live demonstration of our innovation technology. Thank you, Miro. <clears throat> First of all, thank you, uh, Dr. Kim, uh, for connecting us to Cavendish University. And we, in the last, uh, week or so, only we met through a group, Africa, Asia, uh, Scholars Network, about 300 plus people there in the network. And then uh, we met up with uh, Michael, we met up with Joe, and some students as well. So in a very short time, we're sharing a very, very important story here, I believe, that could uh, attract a lot of students, international students to Cavendish University. Why not talk about money, you know? And uh, that's what we are here for, is to create employment. Employment is money. So how do we do that? Nero is going to show you there is just a new, relatively new uh, IoT technology that uh, Nero has invented that can help people to code IoT projects very, very, very quickly and easily with a few lines of code compared to a few hundred lines of code. So today our focus is based on how do you use that competitive advantage in order to attract students to Cavendish University from across Africa and hopefully the world. And if there is a competitive advantage right at your doorstep, right in the heart of the university already, the innovation center, how do you capitalize on it before somebody else does it? Joe touched on something that he said just now about 
you have to be one step ahead of the game. We turn that into a lion story. Yeah. Either you change or you perish. Change what? The lion story said two person in a safari setting in a conference call, you change or you perish. One of them saw a lion in the bush and said to the other one, run or we will become lunch. The other one said, can I change my shoe? And the first one said, do you think you can run faster than the lion when you change your shoe from business shoe to your running shoe? He said, no, I cannot outrun the lion, but I only need to be one step ahead of you. As long as I'm one step of you, like Joe said, you need to be one step ahead of your competitor. Then you will survive. This is actually a real story about Toyota and General Motor, those two persons. So one change with microchip and they turn their sedan Toyota into a Lexus from $30,000 to $150,000. That's changing. That's innovation by microchip coding. They compete with Mercedes-Benz, they compete with BMW. If they didn't change fast enough, like a General Motor, they nearly went bankrupt during the financial crisis. If Obama didn't spend billions of dollars that he's supposed to spend for people who are homeless onto GM, he would have lost millions of jobs. So here's a difficult decision, but he did it, no doubt, but at the expense of those homeless people, because there's only a limited amount of money. So change or we perish is what we are talking about. And the change is made so easy for Cavendish University because uh, Dr. Kim, Joe, Michael, and, and, and uh, others, working together with us has brought a competitive advantage that can help students to make IoT project, coding IoT project with a few lines of code instead of a few hundred lines of code. I repeat that already, I think three times. And Miro will show you. If you are able to make use of that competitive advantage, money will shower on you. You don't have to look for it. You'll be showered with money because nobody has that ability yet. But Miro has just cracked the American market through the Inventors Hall of Fame, where this Afro-American from Africa, American from Africa, has 20 patents. Seven of them are used to increase the speed of the internet. And when he see the same demo that you're gonna see with, the, uh, with Miro, he immediately introduced this to a, a, a network of schools, STEM schools in America. And he is advising the American government on STEM and coding, IoT and so forth, right? So I will leave Miro to show you so that you can see in action what is happening. Miro, you want to take it from there. Do we have somebody who can... Uh, Thank you, thank you, Peng. Um, I have actually arranged my call um, Kuma, Kuma Ketch to actually do that, but apparently the university host has removed him from this Zoom just now. So I'm not oh, sure why, but he was actually me. prepared to uh, open... No, sorry, sorry, let me, let me talk to that. Let me talk to, to Mike. I don't know, even there is someone who has just called me telling me the same. Let me work on that yeah. just immediately right now. Let me see what is Sure. Happening. Okay, sure. sure. Internet issue, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, I think he might have been removed. So hopefully he can rejoin because what he has done is actually opened a special web page which is inside my microchip um, uh, here in Australia uh, on the Wi Fi chip. And he will be able to show how even uh, this innovation can control, it can do. Um, sensing, it can do data logging, it can do control, it can do IoT and AI 
even from Uganda to Australia, across a web page, a special web page as well. So this is what the innovation is, and it is able to do easy coding. So just with two lines of code instead of hundreds of lines of code, you can already create a little web page with on off button. So you can create an alarm, like a smart alarm. And then you can scare off any robbers. You can control anything anywhere in the world using just two lines of code. Many uh, people have tried doing uh, innovations with microchips, but found it very hard, very difficult because of the hundreds of lines of code. So this is the difficulties and it has created a lot of wasting of money and time in a lot of countries. USA, uh, for example, has invested, I think, about $10 billion over many years to do STEM, and this has created a big blockage, and they have not been successful. Other countries have followed, including Australia. In Australia, the uh, PWC finance uh, financial institution have said that just shifting 1% of our population, about 100,000 workers, into STEM will create $57 billion um, into the economy, into the uh, national product of Australia. So um, any country which has this advantage will be able to grow and be able to do innovations much faster using this technology as well. I don't know if Michael has joined, but otherwise, uh, if he doesn't show himself, then Peng, maybe you can describe. So what is the results of some of the uh, people and the students even that have been able to uh, do the innovations and been even able to um, save and make money? Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Miro. While we are trying to get Michael back into his uh, Zoom, I think the standout success story of Africa from Sudan is a young boy called Mustafa, 14 years old. He has set four milestones 12 months ago. He's achieved four milestones. First one is to acquire these competitive advantage skills, which it didn't take too long, maybe about two months. Then he said about milestone number two is to apply it. He applied it by increasing customers to any business. In his case, is to increase customers to his parents' solar system that cost seven thousand US dollars with the solar panel, the batteries, and the inverters. And he increased customers in order to reduce the repayment from $500 per month for 14 months, 7,000 US dollars, $500 per month for 14 months, to $250 per month by introducing five houses to install the solar system. How does he manage to get these five houses? He helped solar business customers' children to make, to code IoT projects quickly and easily to, wear, to win STEM coding inno innovation competitions. And that will reduce the online, harmful online activities, like your video games, like your TikTok, like your Instagram, UNICEF, and many other research has shown that these harmful online activities obviously include bullying too. It's worse than opium. They get addicted to bullying people, they're addicted to games, and that is very destructive by artificial intelligence on human being. Because all these games are AI, it's software, it's coding. So these customers liked it, they start spreading the news to their friends. Would you like to install solar to your house, solar system to your house? But if you go through Walid Solar Business, you got an additional benefit of your children learning STEM coding quickly. 
using this competitive advantage of a few lines of code compared to a few hundred lines of difficult coding, which is 99.9% .9 globally used. Co C++ Arduino. You have no choice because that's the only thing that exists today until Miro invented this easy coding. So how did, does this story fit into what we talk about today? Innovation and entrepreneurship. You see all the elements of the hallmark of what uh, Joe has described in the African success story of 14 year old Mustafa from Sudan, from Khartoum. So innovation, she used the competitive advantage of an IoT technology that Miro invented. Entrepreneurship, he increased customers to reduce his repairment. And that obviously is now being adapted in Cameroon to increase customers to a hotel, whereby this very poor student, Jackson, come from the village, when he go to polytechnic, he need a home to stay, if not he has to pay rent. So he go to the hotel owner and say, would you like me to increase customers to your hotel? If there are empty rooms there, he said, mine is only 30% full, 70% empty. How would you increase customers to my hotel? He said, I will help the customer's children to win competition and reduce the game time. And then they will tell their friends to come and stay in this hotel. And I will also do a drone demonstration that Miro is going to show you every weekend and put your hotel on the map. So he got two rooms. And of course, uh, there are other uh, example of increasing customer to a bread shop by helping the bread shop customers' children to win competitions and reduce the game time. So you have two benefits rather than one, not just to buy bread, but your children will have more STEM time, coding time, and less harmful online activities. So with the increase in customers to the bread shop, the bread shop owner, of course, give bread to the poor kids. And that is using the competitive advantage to solve problem, the application. So this then can be replicated to any business. To Cavendish University, your customers are called students. Your business is called an education institution. So my gener generalization of increasing customers to any business using a competitive advantage applies. And my Australian government advised their office in Malaysia to increase customers, students to Australian universities in Malaysia joint venture using our technology. That's part of our technology export. So it, this technology at the moment is only we have it. So you have a competitive advantage that nobody has. Please make full use of it and create as many case studies as you can. And obviously Dr. Kim will be able to present that uh, hopefully online or face-to-face -face in Delhi in April through this uh, 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 Africa, Asia, Scholars Global Network, ASCON in Delhi, April 16 to 18. And if you create a competitive advantage uh, case studies yourself, <clears throat> you will be able to present it online or face-to-face. -face. And so <clears throat> I think to, to sum up, uh, Miro, we do not have Michael yet, is it? No, yeah, Ma uh, Michael sure. cannot rejoin, sure. that, that's fine. Yeah, yeah okay, my, so my, you, my, let, let me Michael, just- Sorry to yeah. interrupt, Michael has, uh, has gone offline. I think maybe where he is, he would have lost network or anything of the sort. So it is unfortunate, but I think we can carry on. Yeah, so uh, is there uh, somebody uh, else who has a laptop? Uh, excuse me? Sorry. Yeah. Yes, do you hear me? Yes. Yes, doctor, yeah, doctor, doctor, we hear you. Yes, doctor, we yeah. hear you. This is Dr. Kim. Yes, uh, I think I've tried to connect with Mike, but it seems also to be having a, a network issue. Um, I think, Peng, Dr. Peng, what we can do, we can organize. And uh, uh, since we are together, it is a, a series that you have made the presentations. We can still organize you with us. 
as you said, also we're wishing to participate in that uh, uh, convention that is coming in April, among of it. And uh, even we have others, uh, which is, this is very important, and even Joe, what he has discussed. And we as Kavendishi, I think we have like around six, six things that we expect from this kind of uh, uh, thing that has come on board, we have already discussed. And uh, maybe what you forgot that uh, we're intending also to import your boards, not so, the uh, Andrino, are they, you said you're not using Andrino boards. You, are, you have unique boards, not so, thing. Yes. Yeah, yes, 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 we have these these boards yeah. that uh, are now boards, are yeah. even made in Africa as well. Yeah, so we yeah, many yeah. do make and sell. Yeah, so we are very excited because we as a university, there are so many things and uh, we have across faculties. We have focus of law, focus of business, uh, science and technology, social sciences, all these can leverage on, on that because IoT is the way to go. As you have already explained, that there are many things. We are using real-time systems to solve the current problems. Uh, so we are very excited. We are going to engage more and I'm sure you are going to demonstrate that. And as we discussed in our last meeting with you, so we are very excited. Uh, we are very excited for this kind of submission uh, with you. I do Thank submit. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. And if I can just conclude here on our part, the milestone, the last milestone that uh, has happened just yesterday with Mustafa from Sudan is his mother is transferring money to acquire 50 sets of these kits that he's going to make himself. We send him the components, he will make and sell to America, a 14 year old boy. So first milestone he achieved was to learn this skill, two to three months. Second milestone is to apply it straight away to increase customers to a bread shop, increase customers to a solar business by helping the customer's children to win competitions and reduce the game time. And now the final milestone is to make and sell, to teach girls in particular around the world to create gender equality, to have this competitive advantage so that the girls can also participate. And so Dr. Kim will be able to present to United Nations women through Abdul, the president of this group called ASCON, Africa, Asia, Scholar, Global Network. And in a, uh, this doesn't have to wait until April. We should, we should be ready to present uh, through this group. They're already in touch with United Nations Women. It's a group in United Nations about gender equality that they couldn't implement. There's no solution to that if you do not have a technology like this to empower the girls and the girls empower the girls and boys empower the girls so that you have a project that have 100 boys and 100 girls, not 100 boys and 10 girls or no girls in many countries. So you, then you double your human resource. If you want to talk about leadership, trainers look for winners to become leaders. Trainers do not look for losers to become winners, to become leaders. So Cavendish University together with us are creating winners to be trained as, <laughs> to be trained as leaders. It, it's very difficult to train losers as leaders. You can try and we must not stop. We will turn losers into leaders too, but why not start with the winners? And we can create winners like Mustafa within the, a short time of one month. Thank you. And if Mustafa is a girl, I would have invented, I would have created gender equality already. But how difficult it is to look for another girl from Cavendish. I think you mentioned about, uh, is that Dita today? There's a, there's a student. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's a girl there. So, so oh, yeah. she can replicate what uh, uh, Mustafa has done do not need to reinvent the wheel. It's already invented, use it. <laughs> don't waste your time to invent, to invent the globe again. It's already invented by Edison. <laughs> That's yeah? So use it. 
So, so this is the lesson that we learned trying to share with you. So it's now make and sell in Nigeria, just started and already make and sell in Cameroon. So with the few kids that you want in a hurry, we have already found the pricing and the transport to come to Uganda is only a few kids, like five or six. And the rest, if you want volume, we have to send it uh, from uh, Australia. But you wow. can repeat the make and sell too. And this is the, the story for United Nations. Yeah, and, and I think you touched on UNDP earlier. Let me sum it up this way. This is real. As real as uh, 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 Mustafa's story. UNDP in Cameroon provided 500 US dollars to three students to build agricultural robot. IOT, AI, agricultural robot. They spent $50 US buying difficult coding. As I said, 99.9% chance that they will do that because there's no other system exists today in the world. So three months, uh, three weeks later, nothing moved. They couldn't program it. It's too difficult. Hundreds of lines. Can't even flash a light. So we introduced them running. They completed the project, enter into the national innovation competition, innovation entrepreneurship competition. They win 1,000 500 US dollars, 1 million francs, from 300,000 francs to 1 million francs. Then how would smart Cavendish professors make use of this story? Easy, get your student to be employed by United Nations Development Plan because they are also in Uganda. They are also in the whole of Africa and the whole world providing $500 to three students. Imagine you add it all up together, it will be over a hundred million dollars. Call it one million dollars. You're going to be the bridge, Ben. So you, you have the, the story to create jobs already. We are if actually we... having uh, Mr. Kena from UNSD, uh, who is actually fighting the goals of uh, the United Nations as SDG, and is the founder of both of us from Sweden, is uh, is found in Stockholm. So we have the bridges, we have the power, Ben. Yeah, we can do it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying here, just create one job. Yes. You, nobody can build a great wall without a brick. You have so to start do with the six. You have to start. Start, start with the six inches brick first before you think about a wall. The six inches brick is called a job for one of Cavendish University students to work for UNDP. Use that model. Doesn't matter who started it first. They started first, you employ first. They are not employed yeah. yet. Our, our because career, they don't have the, they our don't have the entrepreneurship is skills. Is, uh, who is uh, Mr. Bernard Chan is also on board and he has, he has tried to create a certain bridge on that and he's actually fighting for all those things. Bernard is doing that and he has actually done a great job on that. He has created this, he has scaled it and is moving here and there on the same goals. We're doing that then. But we still need yeah, also. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Focus on just getting one student who just graduating or graduated with no work and work for UNDP using the template from Cameroon. <laughs> Why go and look for other way of creating employment? The money is being burned at the moment. They're burning money, United Nations, UNDP. Uh, if we didn't intercept, that $500 is gone. So multiply that $500 by 1,000 times in the whole of Africa. I'm sure it's more than 1,000 times three students. So that's half a million US dollars. They can afford to pay a Cavendish University student 10,000 US dollars per year. That's your first job. That's your brick. Then you build the Great Wall. If that can be achieved, Dr. Kim will be able to present it to, uh, to UN women, especially if that brick is a girl. Thank you, Mr. Ben. Really Thank you. Grateful. All right. Thanks, I'm really grateful. I don't know whether Mr. Miro has something to uh, discuss more, or I mean to summarize with as we organize the other second series that we shall have this uh, showcase, uh, the, 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 the package that we were supposed to showcase. So, Mr. Miro. Okay, so um, uh, 
Mr. Peng has actually mentioned that uh, Jackson in Cameroon has already actually a drone and he's been flying the drones using this technology too. And that is how he was able to get two rooms for free so that he can actually show these innovations and build up the people even inside uh, that hotel. So um, he's been able to uh, create um, jobs and money and customers for that business as well. And we um, next time will be showing how the drone is connected to this innovation as well. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Before we forget, uh -huh. Miro, can you send the link of the seven, uh, seven minutes drone demo? There is a video of, of the drone demo. So put it into the chat box. So I'll put it into the chat box, it. yes. But it's nothing like the real, the, the live one. Okay, that's grateful, thanks. We are really appreciative. Thanks for your time, Mr. Miro and the Dr. Uh, Cho. Now the issue is uh, I would uh, take this opportunity to at least welcome uh, Mr. Patrick Mugisha, uh, who is well known as the Commissioner of Innovation, uh, intellectual property in the in here in Uganda, uh, and the founder of uh, the Innovate Lab Africa is on board. We are grateful. We, I take this opportunity to welcome you, brother. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Joe. And uh, also I'd like to appreciate the, the previous uh, speakers or discussants, and also to thank very much the University of uh, Cavendish to actually being able to convene this uh, engagement. Uh, as introduced, uh, my name is Patrick Mugisha. And in this space of innovation and entrepreneurship, uh, in our setup here, yeah, many, most people call me Mugi. So really sometimes if you, you're looking for Patrick Mugisha, you may not get him, but you say Mugi, you'll find me. And um, nice. I'm also, uh, <laughs> so I'll come in with uh, 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 immense uh, uh, expertise uh, as a policymaker, having been worked uh, with government for more than um, uh, 12 years, and uh, also in the private sector in the same frame of mind. And uh, my last engagement uh, was with the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, uh, where I was heading the Department for Innovations and Intellectual Property Management. And of course, we'll be able to provide oversight uh, at the national space and also to see how we can tag into the regional aspirations, for example, the East African Community Vision 2050, and also the Africa Union Agenda 2063, which is uh, themed on the Africa we want and also now fitting into the SDG uh, 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 agenda of 2030, leaving no one behind. But practically whatever comes on board is that uh, ST and I is an enabler, but definitely it's a cross-cutting thing. And uh, we actually excited when you see academia trying to kind of like uh, push these efforts in a very significant way. And uh, uh, maybe just the colleagues on, from Australia, uh, as you engage um, stakeholders in Uganda, I, Cavendish, and I think Joe will, re will reveal this to you at some point. There's always a saying that, uh, you know, academia industry uh, uh, situation in Uganda is very weak. And uh, it's all based on uh, blame games where uh, industry says academia produces a half-baked graduates. <laughs> then, <laughs> then academia... <laughs> Then academia blames industry that, uh, so if we are producing half-baked graduates, how much are you committing in terms of R&D to support and engage university to be part of the solution? So at that point now, all of them become at a hold and they say, okay, fine, now let us narrow down and talk and come to a midpoint. So one of the key things that we really want to advocate for is really that synergy and to grow that existing gap between academia and industry. So at Innovent Labs Africa, which is a, a, an advisory firm. And our focus mainly is on to um, advocating and advancing the innovation, innovation and entrepreneurship um, aspirations, aspirations of, uh, uh, of uh, Uganda, but also looking at the region and also Africa. So that's basically what we do. But in that space, we focus mainly on to the five major areas. That is uh, innovation management advisory, intellectual property management, standards and compliance, we look at public sector scaling 
and also academia and industry partnership management. So that's basically how we are really trying to engage Cavendish University to actually be one of the partners of choice to make sure that uh, as we look at this landscape, we're able to actually fit into what uh, the university wants. And we begin on a very kind of like a top bottom approach. Let us first look at what does the management want? What are they committed to do? Where are the gaps in the current existing maybe legal frameworks? Are they sufficient to support their aspirations? And if that's not the case, they should be able to have these things in place. So really to me, as a, as a lead person at Innovent Labs Africa, experiencing the, the S and I domain in this country, the region and the continent, I think this is the best time. We are quite excited to see what we can actually be able to do with Cavendish. And of course, as we join with Cavendish, definitely are going to explore into the spaces that their networks are actually creating for them. Uh, for example, what uh, Mr. Um, uh, Pencho and uh, Miroslav were actually mentioning, this is now an aspect of, uh, of uh, technology transfer. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. The thing we need to do now is to see, can we adapt it or adopt it? It's one of the two. It's now for our case to actually be aligned in that space, but again, also looking at it from the perspective of how aligned is it to government priorities? That is the first thing. Otherwise, policymakers are going to pull your neck if you are, you are presenting a, a solution that is not aligned. And I think this is quite well known even in Australia. The policy takes precedence. They might appear, if you sideline them at the beginning, you will suffer. Private sector cannot exist without the policymaker because private sector does not make policies. Thank you so much. I submit my engagement. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you, Patrick. Patrick. Yeah. Patrick, is that possible for you to spell out your number so that I can text you my number? Yes, I, I, I will do that. Uh, that's a, put it into the chat yeah. box, please. Let me put the chat box, sir. Thank yeah. you. All right. Why uh, I say that is important, Joe, is that uh, uh, if you allow me, is to try to introduce you to our Australian government in Uganda, if there is a high commission there. Our Australian government in Malaysia export this technology into Asia. Okay. So if you, I don't know whether there is an office in Uganda. I know there is one in Nigeria, Abuja. Yeah, if you have maybe, Australian government. Yes, uh, maybe I, I was going to add on, uh, maybe maybe as a scholar and from the university setting, I think Patrick, what we have to assure you is that uh, as Cavendish, uh, our programs are aligned with uh, the NDP-3, and that is the National Development Goals uh, for our country, but also we are not looking inward as uh, in Uganda, but also outside. outside. I think that's why uh, we, have, we are, like some of us, the scholars, we are, number of, we are in a number of platforms, including where now you are meeting Peng. Uh, I think Peng, we are not only at uh, that platform, the Asians, but we have other platforms and also we are well aware because our graduates, whether they like or not, they must end up consumed by the, the government and also they have to, con uh, to conform to the government policy. And I remember I made my presentation last time that what we are focusing on, we are focusing on the hard skills and the soft skills in the current 21st century. Because if you don't have them, you have the hard skills, but then you cannot talk to the government because the government is going to give you the job. So as you play, as we play as universities, uh, we are well aware. And of course, as okay, a university- if, if I can, sorry, yes. uh, Dr. Kim, if I can add to what you just said. Yes. I think you have the solution in your hand yeah. together with yes. Patrick, who yes. used to work for your Ministry of Science already. You have the solution. Uh, uh, what is the yes. solution? Is to say, identify, Patrick, if you know, let us know how much is your budget for Uganda for science? If you mm. know that budget, if it is a hundred thousand US dollars, a million, ten million dollars, you are see you is going to save it because at the moment they are burning it. So don't worry mm. about engaging any government. They are there for you yeah. to solve their problem. Their problem is they are using difficult coding. Worldwide. Very good. Uh, uh, and this is what we are solving, as uh, the War of Patrick was saying that we are. Uh, dwelling so much on the theoretical aspect that we are not uh, producing graduates who have that level, but Cavendish, we are taking a different trajectory uh, compared to our computers. As Peng was talking about, that we are not inventing the wheel, 
But then we are starting from somewhere, and for us, we are bringing a revolution. You either change, but I mean, with your government, but I don't know, I don't know whether you're in IT, but uh, I'm in IT. Today, whether you're a government or not, you cannot forget about IoT. Forget about it. And I wish the Peng was able to demonstrate here, you could see the magic. Because I may not need, time is going to come that I may not need the government of Uganda uh, to access services in Australia, to access services, my house in London, no. We, we are broken the, 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 I mean, I think we are engineering that the government has changed its policies. Other than saying, if we are not there, we cannot exist. Who have told you the space is opened through the technology, STEM. The STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Mm -hmm. And Cavendish, we are saying we, we have to take that kind of trajectory to break the barriers mm -hmm. because we have seen the politicians are letting us down, uh, the, the so-called policies, and the government is making us, if you cannot do this, we can't employ your graduates. But then who told you? We, graduates can't be employed virtually right now. Virtually, like now paying, I think paying already is winning it. His employment, uh, I hear we're already importing his, his boards here. So we appreciate that. But then also as a university, we are the engineers. We, we give uh, the brain behind. Of course, it is lacking, as Patrick highlighted, that, that gap between the higher institutions and then the government. But initially, we are trying to do that, that we do uh, recognize that. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I think uh, if I can say finally this. If Patrick, you can find out how much is your STEM budget, if any, science, I'm sure. Don't yeah. call it STEM, call it science, biology, mm. chemistry, mm. physics, coding, budget. Mm. Whether Let's call it a round figure, $1 million. Mm. And that, get the economists on board as well to help you to get that figure. Because mm. that money is easily proven, 75% is wasted, according mm. to America. They mm. spend ten billion dollars. They still have a STEM crisis because of coding. Mm. Okay, number two yeah. is to build that six inches brick. Get the first job. Don't talk about other things. Get mm. the job of UNDP for one student, one graduate from CEO. With that two things, submit it to your government. I guarantee you, you will get money. Mm. Okay. Because the money they give you is the money you're saving. That's yeah, good. that is it. Yeah. Let me let's take the opportunity to hear Patrick summarize it and we close the session as we are heading to a different session. So Mr. Patrick, you can take it from there and maybe uh, we yeah, can close the, the chapter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Joe, once again, and also the uh, the previous uh uh, 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 uh discussant uh, doctor. I, I I didn't get his name clearly. Uh, and uh, Doctor, yeah, yeah. So, that is so the uh, dean faculty of science and technology at Harvard. Yes, yeah, doctor. I, I know we'll meet very soon, but you see, we, we, <laughs> there's an ideal world, but there's also a real world. So, and uh, and uh, Cavendish University is not living in, in an island; it's living in reality here. So, I think no matter what happens, as an institution, you have your own internal politics which definitely are going to allow you to be either inward or outward looking. But bottom line is that. If today government makes a policy, sometimes if this policy does not make you happy, a policy will never be for one person, it's for everyone. So bottom line is that we are going to see how we navigate around this, but Cavendish University should not stop aspiring and dreaming of where they really want to be. You can be a change maker and a global change maker by what your actual decisions that you make. And I believe bottom line, uh, going to what uh, 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 Dr. Peng was actually talking about, is that the thing is that the science Eastern I landscape in Uganda is a little bit, kind of like a little bit uh, 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 tricky, but I think as you continue communicating through, uh, 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 through Joe and uh, Cavendish University, I think we we'll definitely look at a point, what is possible, what's not possible? Because uh, there are very many key players currently and for us to narrow down, Whatever solution is being presented, where would it fit in? What would be the best home of this solution? I think that would be the most important approach to take from here. But we are grateful and thank you so much for your time. Thank you for picking interest in Uganda, the Pearl of Africa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much, you. everyone. I would request. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, yeah. I would request Professor Ijo.
Uh, Professor Ijo is uh, the director of uh, the School of Postgraduate at Cavendish University to give us closing remarks and we call it a day. Professor Ijo, you're welcome. Um, thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. Yes. Um, yes, uh, this has been a very stimulating discussion and I have been following it very keenly. Um, I, I, I believe that Innovation is the key to survival, especially in a liberal market environment. Uh, so I, I want to thank our speakers of today. They have presented the case very eloquently, and I am very grateful for that. Uh, uh, the uh, Dr. Peng and Dr. Miro, and of course our own. Um, Joe Kagata uh, and the, the participants. Uh, it is my pleasure to, 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 to say very big thank you to each and everyone who has participated today. Uh, I wish you all the best and let's go forward and put this in practice. Thank you all very thank much. You. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, yeah. I'm really grateful for the time you have actually taken to, to, to have this together. I think next time we shall continue like this. I'm really grateful. Thanks for the time you have invested in this. May the good Lord bless you. Bye. Take a group picture, Thank you, Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can you take yeah. a group picture? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about right. remember everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, turn, turn uh, on okay. your camera. Turn on your camera. All right. Okay. <laughs> turn on your camera. Take a group picture. <laughs> <laughs> hey. So we can show it to the conferences around the world. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Nice to I'll meet you, it. Patrick. Yeah. Thank you so much, Joe and uh, Dr. Kim and, uh, and, and the director of postgraduate. Isn't it? Yeah. All right. Have a good day. Thank you. All the best. Take care.